Okay, let's move to the last tutorial of model, uh, model one. Okay, this is a tutorial three. So we're going to work flow past a cylinder. Okay, so this is a very interesting case because we have many variations of, of this case. We're going to only address four cases, four variations, but there you have many cases. Later, I'm going to show you the director structures. Okay, so one thing at this point, we already covered Two tutorials we explore the dictionary so i'm not going to go into details about the dictionaries unless it is strictly necessary so in this case what we're going to do is the classical flow about a cylinder you now the we have for a given reynolds number you're going to have different carbon street so here we have domain dimensions this case is 2d okay but it can be standard to 3d with no problem and we can cover from incompressor to compressor laminar turbulent okay so we're going to study a few variations so the workflow the solvers how what we're going to do is that we can generate the mesh using block mesh or convert or importing the mesh from another format. So I'm going to show you this and we're going to talk a little bit about the boundary file that I have been talking about that. But now I think I'm going to address a few issues there and probably clarify all ideas. We are going to use, or we can use in this solver, all these different solvers, okay, in this case. And the traditional post-processing, function objects, and so on. So just to refresh your memory regarding the physics, so you have this, this cylinder, okay, and depending on the Reynolds number, you can have different behaviors, okay? So is your Reynolds below, let's say, 46 kind of of the critical Reynolds number to have the onset of this instability. You have an steady, an steady flow like this. Then you have the von Karman street, so you have these vortices that are released, no? But however, have in mind that you have this shedding here, this unsteadiness, but this doesn't mean that the flow is, is fully turbulent. Okay, it still is laminar. Then you move here, you go the transition, and you have the fully turbulent flow, so you can have the fully flow turbulent, including the wag, only the boundary layer, and so on. Okay, but let's say roughly speaking, after 300, is you are in fully turbulent region. Okay. So since important also to understand about the physics that we're dealing. So in these cases, the physics, the actual physics in the real world, so you have this scenario, the flow will be steady. Steady mean that you don't have any shading here, okay, <clears throat> in, in the wake, okay? And if you have a large range of number, you are going to have this unsteady, the vortex shading, okay? So the physics, in re even in reality, you will have these vortices shed there, and this is a truly unsteady physics, okay? The flow, the nature is unsteady. Then we can do the distinction between a steady and unsteady solver. So I can use an steady solver to deal with all these cases, but also I can use an steady solver to deal with all, all these cases. It doesn't matter, okay? A steady on steady solvers are models, while the underlying physics here can be on a steady or a steady. So is your underlying physics, you are sure that it's a steady, it makes sense to do an steady solver. But you can also use an steady solver, but it will take longer. And if you're on the underlying physics, it is on a steady, it makes very sense that you use on a study on on a steady solvers, however, you can also use a steady solvers, okay? So this is just to clarify this, this, this confusion, confusion, but later on we're going, in some other models, we're going to address this, okay? But <clears throat> be careful with that. So we have a lot of results in this case, or experimental, numerical here, you have some, some references. And basically what we're going to, to do is something like this. So in this case, it's Reynolds 200, so let's say that it still is fully laminar, and see that the flow, you have an initial transient, you might have the impression that it's steady, but at one point you have the onset of the, of the instability, and voila, okay, this is what, you are, what, what we're going to solve, okay? So this is a fully unsteady solver that we're using here, but you can use a fully uh, <coughs> a steady solver, okay? However, the physics that you are going to resolve is not accurate, because you are not resolving now the, <clears throat> the frequency, the, 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 the vortex shedding frequency. Okay, so then also, well, just to refresh that, you need to also monitor forces, so here in this case, the drag coefficient, lift coefficient, so these are your, those 
uh, functional objects or monitors, okay? So we set up this one and we can control and also see that the beginning, you might have the impression that it's steady, nothing's happening, but then you have the onset of this instability. So there are some tricks here also to, 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 to add a perturbation and then, <clears throat> and then onset this instability faster, okay? So let me move here. So you have the, the cases here and let me go Okay, so whatever you unpack the cases and just to show you, see that you have vortex shading and see that you have 27 folders here, directories. Each one corresponds to a different variation of this case. It is exactly the same geometry, but see that we go for Suxony to compressible high, uh, high Mach number to laminar turbulent. We even add multi-phase flows and put it into motion, okay? So you can play with this case, okay, later, but I'm not going to address all cases. I'm just going to address four cases, okay? So <clears throat> the first case that we're going to do is the standard one, okay? So let me move here. So it will be Reynolds 200 laminar flow. And to remind you that when you do the mesh, you need to assign, and this is the part, probably the most confusing part in open from setting boundary conditions because there are many of them. So I hope that I will clarify ideas here. So one thing important that you need to always check this file, the boundary. Remember that you will find this file in the constant poly mesh directory, okay? So here you are going to set the base type of boundary conditions. Okay, so basically in this case, we're going to see that this, we're going to say that this surface here, it is a patch. This is a patch. This will be a symmetry, a symmetry, and then remember it's a 2D, so you have the empty one, and this is a wall. Okay, so we need to do that, but what is, can be confusing sometimes that when you define a patch, a patch can be a DD sledge or a Newman boundary condition, and there are many in open phone. So this, <clears throat> I will try to convey, you know, the idea of what is happening there. Okay, so later we're going to open this file. Okay, you can read it, but this is the point here. So remember, when you go in constant polymesh boundary, after you create the mesh or converter, import or whatever, you have many options of patches. And here I'm showing you the most common uh, combinations of boundary conditions that we use. Okay, you have the base type and the numerical type. So this one, the this base type are <coughs> are the same. Okay, so as you call it here, constant polymesh boundary symmetry. Then in, in the boundary conditions, U, P, alpha, whatever you have, also will be symmetry. Okay, so these are kind of coupled together: symmetry, symmetry, and the end. If you have walls, how to set up walls is like this: wall. You give this type wall we're going to see that later and then when you set u and p you give this type okay <clears throat> and then it's, and then we have this this part this <clears throat> base type called patch in constant polymesh boundary and this is probably the most confusing one because when you set patch here when you go to u and p it can be any boundary condition implemented in open phone. In open phone there are many okay and this is the confusing part so probably here i'm showing you the most common ones the one that you are going to use most of the time okay so all of this corresponds to to new manner derivation boundary conditions so fixed value you fix the value in a surface inlet outlet whatever mass flow ray or volumetric flow ray you can set it like this you have an equivalent one for outlet you have another free stream for external aerodynamics, high speed. This is inlet outlet in, in outlets in case that you have flow coming back. A slip is the only one boundary layer. Okay, so this is for boundary layer. This one you don't have you one boundary layer. And this slip can be equivalent to the symmetry, but the symmetry applies only when you have planar faces. A slip is you have flight faces with with curvature. Okay. And so, and so on, okay? Zero grading is the extrapolation. So these are the most common ones that you are going to see and probably the tutorials that we're going to address, we're going to stick with this, but there are many more. So this is very important to understand this, okay? So remember, in constant boundary, okay, is you have a symmetry or anti, you set it here, symmetry anti, and then in UP, symmetry anti. Is you have walls, in constant polymesh boundary, it will be wall, and U and P, you set up like this. And then for all the patches, let's say that, <clears throat> typically the rest of the patches are inlets and outlets, okay? And some other specific boundary conditions. You call it patch here, and then you use, these are the most frequent, frequent ones, okay? But there are many more. And then 
Just to mention that also there is a specific treatment at the walls when we're dealing with turbulence models. So we have an advanced model to deal with this, but just to introduce one, this one that you can have these field variables, okay? So you solve for UMP, but then you add a turbulence model, and in that turbulence model you add some new variables. So you need to give boundary conditions. So this is how you set up. Okay, so later we're going to talk about what is a high rate or low rate. Okay, this does not refer to the global Reynolds number or the system Reynolds number. This will be the Reynolds number close to the walls. Okay, so there is a way to, to, to compute it. So this is how you define those boundary conditions. Okay, so this is the case that we're going to work. Uh, the first one, okay, so we are going to do, first we're going to do, <clears throat> we're going to do, it, to do it in two ways, okay? C1 and C2. In C2, we, ha we have it using block mesh, and C1 converting the mesh for another format. The, I'm going to show you both cases, okay? So there is some initial post-processing, some tools. So let's go to C C1. So here you have the rhythmic cases. Okay, and you have now the description of the cases. So you have C1, okay, it is using block mesh and C2 is using fluent mesh. We're converting from fluent. So let's go to C2 just to show you how to do things. Okay, so you go here, vertex shading, C2. Okay, as usual, you have the scripts there with all the steps. Okay, so <coughs> Let me go here, C2. So remember that the structure, zero, constant, and system. Okay, so these are the computes for the one. These are optional directories. I will show you that here we have some scripts to, to plot forces and so on. Okay, so constant, just transfer properties in this case. So in this case, we're going to use also, uh, again, Icophone, okay? Remember that I told you that Icophone is not recommended because it's a very limited solver, okay? But just to illustrate, we're going to use Icophone, but then the, there are other cases that we move to another solvers, okay? So <laughs> just transfer properties in serial, we're only solver for UMP, so we set up boundary conditions here, okay? But wait a minute before opening that one, we need to get the mesh. And then system is the numerics, okay? So to get the mesh, Let's do it a step by a step here, okay? So let me load here. And the first step is that this mesh was created using uh, Influent. So see that this is the command, Fluent 3D Mesh. Okay, so it's going to convert the mesh from Fluent Format into Open Form Format. So this is the location, so it's relative. So recall when we studied the batch. So this is the path relative to the current one that we are. Okay, so this will convert the mesh. So it's I do like this, I put it here. See that we converted the mesh. Okay, but what is important, let's see what we have. Parafond, and please use the auction built in, okay, just to avoid some errors that, potential errors that later we're going to see. So basically what we're going to do is that, remember, everything is 3D, so even if in the case is 2D, you need to have a 3D domain, and here you add one cell, okay? So that's all. So what we're going to do is this is an inlet. This is an outlet. These are, these two front and back are empty because it's 2D, and then I will say top and bottom, I will put their symmetry, okay? Meaning that I don't want boundary layer, but I also can use this lit one. So they are equivalent, okay? It's up to you to pick up one. Or maybe you can leave it as an open here and will be an outlet. Okay, it's not recommended because it can be a little bit sta unstable because it's too close to the wall. So usually you leave everything open with very large domain. But in this case, this is what we're going to do. It's one you can put it as a wall. So see that we're thinking about boundary conditions here. And this is a wall as well. Okay, so before doing that, okay, so see that we have here in constant polymesh, we have this file here. This is very important. Let me open this one. And here, at this point, we need to set the base type. So see that the outlet for me is this one here. So in the outlet, I need to use a patch because it will be a new man or a zero gradient, okay? So I know that this here needs to be a patch. Then scene one and scene two, scene two will be top and bottom, okay? I call it like that, but just to show you, just to confirm. Okay, so I will use their symmetry where I can use something else there. I can put also patch and sleep. 
Okay, but symmetry in this case, will, it, it is okay. So you want, you can erase this keyword, it's not needed. For a moment, I'm not going to do it. And see that also the names that you see here, when you convert from Fluent, is recognizing the name. So you have the same name, but it's the one you can change that name. But look at that, we have seven patches. Okay, this is okay. Symmetry, symmetry is one of those coupled patches that, that you need to have the same type all over the files. Then in is a patch, see cylinder is a wall, and then we have back and front. So back and front are these two patches, okay? And those, to deal with a 2D case, they need to be of empty type. So see that what I do here is empty and empty. That's all, okay? That is okay. And where's the top? So this is very important. Always when you do the mesh, I recommend you to check this file and see that if you have <coughs> the right base type, okay, this one. And then also you can change the name. Remember this, you don't change this, this information. You just sh change the name and adjust the base type. It's the one you can erase the, the groups, okay? That is not needed. So see that we have outlet. In the outlet, it will be a zero gradient. So that should be a patch. So let me go back here. Zero gradient have to be a patch there. Then symmetry in top and bottom. So symmetry is like this. It's the same all over in, in constant polymesh boundary and in zero U, zero P, zero nude and all those files. Okay, all the, the, the fields variables. In is a patch where I'm going to use a fixed value for velocity. So patch, fixed value, okay? Then we have the cylinder, which is a wall. So remember that this wall is in a specific patch, a specific no definition, because also you, you are allowed to put wall functions now when you are doing terminus model. So in the file constant poly mesh boundary, you call it boundary, and then zero U and zero P. So for velocity is type fixed value, zero, 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 okay? There is no velocity at the wall. And for pressure, zero gradient, which is a Newman extrapolation, okay? And that's all. And then when we deal with turbulence, you're going to choose these combinations that later we're going to, to look, look at that. And also for a front and back is empty, that you have here, empty. And in all the other fields variables in the folder zero, you put it empty. So look at the logic that we follow, okay? So I rename it here, and now, and if you like the names, you do it like that, or if you don't want these names, you can ch change it. For the moment, these names are, are okay for me. So see that now I go into zero, and you open your field variable. So here we, ha we have just two variables, but you can have here five, four, six, okay? All of them, you need to define your boundary conditions and initial conditions. So let me go first to you and see that we have here. Dimensions, okay, initial conditions, and then we start to define variables. So see that in, so important, you need to have the same names. So see that in, is in, and it's a fixed value, it's a patch, okay, patch type. Then we go to out. Out, you have zero gradient or inlet outlet. So inlet outlet is equivalent to a zero gradient, but here you have a treatment to deal when the flow is coming back to the domain. Okay, so you set up this like this. Okay, so there is <coughs> it's a standard this setup. So you want more information, remember phone info, inlet outlet, and you are going to get the information. But this is a standard setup. So as you go here, see that you have out is a patch and you give this boundary condition. Cylinder is a wall, so boundary, you have cylinder, so we have the same name, it is a wall, and see fixed values, uniform zero, zero, as you have in the slides, no? how <coughs> all the different combinations. Symmetry, sin one and sin two are symmetry, so symmetry, symmetry, you go to boundary, is symmetry, symmetry, so it's the same name, okay? So these are quite easy, okay? Because they have the same name, the same type all over the files. The, the confusion part is when you use patch or wall that they don't have the same type here and here they don't have. And empty is the same, same type, okay? Type empty, empty, and then you empty, empty. There are also periodic boundary conditions, it's called cyclic. It is also the same type, so actually let me let me add it here, okay, so it will be cyclic and cyclic, okay, so that is a very specific boundary condition. I don't like to use it much, but 
you have it there. So you set up like this. This is for you, and then we go to P. P is the same. Inlet, I use zero grading. Remember, it's kind of extrapolation. Take the values, the cell next to the patch. So imagine that you have pressure here in the inlet, and it will take the value of the next cell center, okay? So extrapolation. Out, I fix my reference pressure, and this is very important. I recommend you to fix at the outlet, fix the pressure level. Do not use zero gradient. It makes sense to use zero gradient. However, it is a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, oscillatory. So fix your pressure le uh, level. You need to fix it. So put it to zero. It's relative pressure, by the way. So you see zero is in compressible solver, so we can use relative pressure. The cylinder is a zero gradient, okay? So that corresponds to how you pair you know, the boundary conditions here. And then symmetry, you see symmetry, symmetry, anti anti. Okay, these are quite easy. And that's all. So if you have, for instance, now temperature, it will be something similar. You will need to assign the values, okay? So if you have symmetry, so if you add the, the new variable, this one will be also symmetry, symmetry, anti anti, okay? And then you need just to assign this, this cylinder. So just to show you, now that we have assigned this, <clears throat> this is what we need to do. So as you see, it's relatively simple. So it doesn't matter how you generate that mesh, is you import that mesh or use block mesh or snappy X mesh. My advice is always do a cross check, okay? Open this file, check that you have the right type, but also check that you have the name, the right name, or or if you agree with that name. Okay, if you like this name, if for you it's okay, okay. When you define in zero U and P, you use the same name. So see that if I now change this name, see that this, I will put it like this. And if I launch now Parafon, it will complain, it will crash. Okay, if I press apply, see that it's crashing because you have this name that is not it hasn't been defined in UMP. Okay. If you launch Parafon minus build int, what is going to happen that this auction is going to ignore that error. So you you force Paraview to open the file. See that now you open. Okay, but it is ignoring that error. Okay, so be careful that <coughs> that if you use Parafon build in, you are not going to be able to see if you have the right names, but it doesn't matter. If you try to run the solver also, it, it, it is going to complain, okay? Because you don't have the same name, okay? So just to show you why I was using the para, para from built in auction. The same will be with the, with the, uh, with the type. For instance, if I put this one now symmetry, okay? It will complain because it will tell me, okay, let, let, uh, let me show you. See that it's telling you that in P is defined as a symmetry, as a, as a fixed value, sorry, but in the base type is a symmetry, okay? So you need, you have this mis mismatch between types. So be careful, of, always check that. And just to show you also that this information here is not necessary, okay? So if I erase this one, okay? This is just to create groups to visualize. Now you can put all these patches in a, in, a, in a group. So when you open Parafon, you need to click in each of the auctions. So you can select the group. So see that it's running with no problem. Okay, so I hope this clarifies this file, uh, the, this boundary files and boundary conditions. And for an info, just to show you also when you are in doubt, always go here and see that for instance, inlet, outlet, it's going to show you the location, whatever you pick up one, and how to use that one. Okay, so see that here you have kind of the template how to use it. Okay, so this is how you set up boundary conditions. By advice, okay, do not let me go here. Uh, do not get lost into all the boundary conditions that you have in open for you have many of them okay and this as i said this is confusing so see that this is the location where you have all those boundary conditions and let me go there so i here open phone open for nine src find up volume then in fields every patch fields and see here that you have basic See that you have zero gradient, mix, fixed value, fixed gradient, extrapolated, calculated, couple calculated, 
basic sy sy symmetry. Then constraint, you have this other wedge symmetry. Okay, so this one constrained. Remember, these are uh, this one are the same in all files. Okay, in constant polymer boundary and also in CDU, UP, NUD, whatever. And then here you have derived. And here's where things get confused, okay? You see that you have all these many options that honestly, yeah, it can make things difficult. But for the moment, what we're going to, to, to do, let's say that these are the most common combinations that you are going to use, okay? So that being said, let's move and let's run the, 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 this case, okay? So before running also, I want to show you that if you go here into the run solver, see that we convert the mesh, check mesh quality and then see these two commands these two commands here what they are doing is renaming the patches automatically okay so i did it manually but you can use also these input files or <coughs> dictionaries to do the renaming okay so basically the syntax is like this so you name of the patch okay and then the type you can assign the type and the name of the original patch so see that original patch change the type and give this new name. You cannot use the same name, okay, by the way. So see that I do it two steps. You create this temporary name and then you rename it again to back, okay? But here what I'm doing is assigning the type, okay? So probably I overcomplicated since here there is an easier way, actually manually it might be easier, but there is another command that you can do it also later. We're going to see that new command. And see here that now here I go back and the temporary just renaming okay so basically just i'm doing the renaming and the only thing that i change in here is the type of front and back okay that is all end so it might be a little bit confusing now i over it but that's all and we're going to run okay so let me run okay so as you open control d you see that we're going to run for a really long time okay 300 seconds with this tense that we're using icophone, okay? Remember that's a limited solver, so we don't have those options to control to adjust automatically the times according to the current number and so on. And then the function object. So see that we have this function object or monitors that will compute mass flow. So see that you have the patch name. It's a region type patch. Name is the name that you know is called in and operation sum summation of what phi, which is the, the, the Plots, and that is going to give you the mass flow at the inlet. This is at the outlet. So the method is conservative. So what is going on in is going out. Field average. Okay, so we're computing average of U and P. So here you have the mean and the prime to mean. Okay, so this is the, the fluctuation. Okay. Forces. Okay, this is how we compute forces. So see that is it will compute the forces. And the forces are in Newton, okay? And remember that the pressure that you have is pressure divided rho and will treat stresses also, divided rho or density. So see that you have give name of variables, the walls where you want to compute forces, it, they need to be walls, okay? So that is very important. They need to be walls, okay? So in constant polymer boundary, they need to be defined as wall. So this is center of rotation to compute the moment, okay? And then also you have force coefficient, which is pretty much the same, but then you normalize. So you give the variables to normalize, okay? Here, and here you have L ref, which is the reference value to normalize the moment, and A ref is the reference area to re normalize leaf and drag, okay? And then the minimum and maximum, as you will see, it is a constant no, that I always I like to plot this information. So, so in OpenFone 8, it was done like this, super easy. Now they make it a little bit more complicated in OpenFone 9. Probably also I tend to overcomplicate things. But yeah, it's not as straightforward as, as it used to be in OpenFone 8. And here you have, so it will just print information about minimum and maximum of P and U. So if you have more scalars, you put your new scalars here, okay, whatever or vectors, you put it there and then it will print that information, minimum and maximum. And that's all. So let's run this case. Run solver and voila, off you go. It's running. And now let me lo let me open here a new window, Python. Oh, sorry, it's an Anaconda tree. So it will be Python plot 
washer lot like okay will be log solver ah no i solve okay i need to change the name of that no. so see that this is what is happening okay so see that we look at the residuals and by the way also we can look at the forces so we have a new new plug script so in those folders scripts you will find a few scripts so coef it will plot on the fly your coefficient leaf and drag coefficient okay so see that now if you are curious to know what is happening there just go into a script zero and you will see the script it is a new plot script that is plotting that information okay so i know that always in post processing okay you are going to that, uh, have that information here. You gave that name, and here you have that function, the output. So I'm using new plot just to plot this information. Very straightforward. Okay, so you can open the script just to get familiar to what what is going on there. But let's take a look at the convergence. So see that at the beginning, see that you will see this, and you will say, okay, this is converging. But we don't know to what it is converging. And we know that this solution, it is oscillatory. So there will be one point during the simulation that these residuals will go up. So do not, <laughs> do not enter into panic that these residuals are going up because that is just an indication of unsteadiness. And this is why these residuals can be very misleading. Okay, because see here that they're going up this is not necessarily an indication of divergence. It's just telling you that you have a strong unsteadiness, and that's all. So these are initial residuals. The final residuals, you have final residuals, and as you look at your output window, your final residuals are always reaching the tolerance that you define in SV solution. So see that. But what you are plotting are initial residuals. So remember that you are resolving a linear system in an iterative way. So you need an initial guess to start iterating to solve that linear system. So that is what you are plotting there, okay? So then you reach your final tolerance, me move to the next iteration and keep doing it. So what is happening here, when you move to the next iteration, you use previous solution, but the difference is too large between uh, time step. So that's why they go up. Instead, when you have a, st a steady solution that the solution doesn't change, this is the behavior that you have. They go, go down <coughs> in a monotonic way, okay? So see that at the beginning, as you recall from these slides, and let me go back here. See that at the beginning, it is steady. So that's why they are going down nicely, but then at one point you have the onset of the instability and then they will go up. So the difference between iterations, iteration, let's say two on one is too large. So that's why they go up. But that is by no means, that is an indication of divergence. It's just telling you that you have an external unsteadiness and you see all that behavior reflected here. Okay, so see that about 120, you start to have an external unsteadiness and then here everything settled and about 200 seconds see that still they are going up no these residuals okay so this is why i don't like to 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 to, to rely you know in the residuals because if you don't have experience can be a little bit misleading so it's better to monitor a quantity of interest so always monitor a quantity of interest force mass flow total pressure whatever this is a better indication of convergence okay so see that it still is running and see that this one is still is changing it still have it it hasn't reached an a steady state okay or a periodic state so we cannot say that i can stop the solution you will stop the solution when you see that these oscillations reach a periodic behavior or when you see that you have a good uh, you have enough information to take an average uh, a reliable uh, average value okay so it will run up to 350 seconds, okay? So see that probably here we can say that, okay, starting from 250 seconds, the solution is already periodic, so you can stop it. But nevertheless, uh, I let it run 350 seconds, okay? So this is what happens, okay? So this is an stronger and steady problem. This is how you monitor your solution, look at your residuals, 
monitor a force or mass flow, which by the way, I haven't shown you here. Let me show you here that you have the mass flow here. Okay, so remember the method is fully conservative. So what is going on, what is going in is going out, okay, globally, okay? So fully uh, conservative, you have here your coefficients and here you have your minimum and maximum values. So I always like to plot this because sometimes it might happen that you can see some unrealistic values. So the solver will keep iterating and you, you are not going to realize that you have those unrealistic values until the simulation is over or you start to do the post-processing. So I always like to plot this, okay? So see that all values make sense, which by the way, be careful that at the beginning it might happen that these values won't make any sense. But remember that we're starting from the initial conditions that might be uh, very far from the actual final solution. So it might be, might be large values or very small values, but then uh, slowly they will start to stabilize and we'll get into something more physical. Okay, and voila, the simulation is over, 350 seconds. You have all the residuals there. Okay, the continuity error, remember that it doesn't matter if they are positive, negative, but they need to be small. Okay, so let me close down everything. So I will, okay, I need here to control C to close that, and this one also control C, control C. Okay, I run, I run in serial, by the way, you can run in parallel also, so you use the compose par and pay run and so on. So see that we have all these time folders, and now it's just post-processing. Okay, so coming back here and be before doing that post-processing, look at that, we have that. Then if so I open this, see that all the functions object that you define it here, see that those folders correspond to these names, okay? The names that you're given there. So then you can access that information there. Uh, if I go here in SB Skin, SB Solution, what you see here, uh, you can already take it as a best practice, okay? So this is a good numerics, and actually this is the numerics, the numerical method that you are going to find in commercial software. So this is equivalent. Okay, so I already given you, you know, a good template that you can reduce. Even here, see that you have different linear solvers, okay? So I put here three linear solvers. Okay, so you have different options, and as I say, it's difficult to say which one is the best one, okay? In this case, let's say the multigrid is the best one. Usually the multigrid, the G, A, N, G, have the tendency to be, be the best one, but not necessarily, okay? Let's say that you have different linear solvers for pressure, then velocity, and then this ecophone is based in piso, okay? So you put your auctions, your loop, Okay, so this is also recommend you to use two on one for when you have a, a physics that is not too severe and a standard on the relaxation for on a steady solvers. Okay. So also let me open we have uh, this script file. So see that these are here, you can use it to plot. Okay, so these are new plots, okay, it's new plot script. So see that if you open here. Basically, it's just unique just to read, to understand how to use no blue, but it's relatively easy. So remember that, you know that in my case, I know that always force coefficients is located here. So just plot columns one and three, and that's all. Okay, you set here the axis and multiplot and so on. So here you have different scripts. So here you put, you plot both of them. This is just a singular, single one. You go here into scripts. Also, you have how to plot also residuals if you are not using uh, Python plot washer, but as we're using Python plot washer, probably you need to to look at there. And then in scripts also, you have some script, scripts too. You have to do the plotting and compute also frequencies and stuff like that using Python. So these are Python scripts. So see the extension.pi is Python tree scripts. So you can open there and see, so in this case, computing frequencies and so on. But see that it's always accessing the information in the location where you know it, it is safe. And here is how to compute a statistic also, using Nuplot, by the way. So you go here, this is how you compute statistic using Nuplot. So basically it's computing the statistic of the last 5,000 records that you have in that file. Okay, and you have to be careful, okay, because to choose that range where you want to compute a statistics. 
So you can compute if you, if you don't define that one, it will compute the, the statistics of everything. But you know that you have this initial transient that you cannot use for your statistics. So you need to start for something like 250 or 300 seconds and compute your statistics. So what you see here is just telling you start to compute this statistic from from record 5,000. No, for so this uh, this is time, but also you have the record, no, the the line number. So it will be like from line 5,000. Okay. And that's all, okay? So now we move to the post-processing. Uh, run solver. So see that in post-processing, there is no, I didn't add any other step, okay? So let me close here. Okay, and we launch Paraphon, okay? So, Paraphon. And let me go here. You can choose velocity. You can go to the latest time, adjust the scales, and then press play. And that's all. You have your animation. We already saw how to save animations. You can go there. You can add a filter for time if you want. So, bam, 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 bam. annotate time filter here. You have your filter. Let me split the screen in two. So, see here, I click here. Now render view, and in this second one, I want to plot pressure. Okay, and you can also split horizontally, vertically, it's up to you. So yeah, you have now these two screens, and if you press play, you have velocity and pressure. Okay, so just to end this first part because this is divided in four parts okay so to end this first part just to show you some additional steps okay so we have the basic fields but see that in this animation here we have vorticity field okay vorticity field it will give you an indication of the rotation of the vortices you can compute that using a paraphone with the Classic and no function outlets. Okay, so here, let me go here. You have the commands here. So see that using this new command, post process, see that. And let me put it there. And actually, you go post process list. Okay, or minus list. Okay, or. Um, will be like this okay so see that is giving you a list of all function objects or additional fields that you can compute so this is we're doing a posteriori because you have something equivalent that you can add here and you can compute it on the fly but also you can do it a posteriori and this is the way i'm going to show you so i want to compute let's say vorticity you go okay let me recall here you go vorticity and for instance you put the auction no zero is not going to compute it for time step zero okay if you put it like this for every single time step okay you can also give a time range so use the, the help auction it will give you different options so here you have different cases so see no zero does not compute it for a time zero compute it only for the latest time and see that here now we're computing gradient of u of velocity here gradient of p so as you have no options for every single time step and here for a range of time steps okay for from time 50 to 300 compute do this okay so this is something else so here post process compute divergence of velocity see here that we have compute the current number okay so and see here that instead we're using icophone, but see that I here I put piso, uh, pisophone. I put here pisophone because icophone does not have, they cannot use this the this post processing utility. So you see that these are the limitations. Okay, but pis pisophone and icophone they are this pretty much the same. But pisophone you have support to models and advanced post processing, so it will also handle this case. So just to show you. Uh, uh, uh. So if I use, okay, it will be picophone, post process, function, current. And let me go here. 
Okay. Good a number. See that is giving me a problem, an error, ecophone. Okay, this auction cannot handle that auction. Instead, so you go piece of phone. Okay, okay, now this one. Okay, let me let me check piece of phone minus. Uh, 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 piece of uh, 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 uh. okay minus okay minus post process and should be good and number okay I don't expect that zero for okay it's not taking man of oh no okay Okay, this is also an update. So will we see here that you have the help and okay will be minus font okay and you want to use yours let's say Q or couldn't or well, give me the list first. Okay. Ah couldn't okay so bum 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 the problem okay ah it's not this minus it's this okay so again i have piece of phone okay and the options here list of, uh, so see that is you have different options it will give you a list execute function object. so if i run this one it will execute only the function objects okay so I go post process and it's executing all the functions objects okay but it's giving me here an error actor is giving transfer properties because it's not compatible okay so this is a chance and update okay I would update this these steps here okay so let me update this one but this one should we, this one are, are these steps are working fine okay so for instance let me go for this this one okay uh, bam, 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 post process. Okay. Okay, probably <laughs> don't copy and paste from this line. Vorticity. Okay. And you have it right. So now this one is is computing the vorticity. By the way, you don't copy and paste from this line because it will give you an error. Or also you can go, if I would recall, this one should work also. Okay, post process, like a phone. Okay, now this one is not working. Okay, I need to update this one. Okay, but for instance, we go vorticity. For instance, what else we can compute? We can compute, okay, let me see what was the list. Ah. Okay, couldn't. I want the current number. Okay, so it's computing the current number and so on. Okay, so it's up to you know to, to get the, the, the list. Okay, so remember you can go post process list and you have all the list. So you can compute all this function object. Okay, so in this case you have Mac number, but in this case you cannot compute it. You need to have the variables, you have the gradient now. So for instance, to compute gradient of you you can go like this uh, so be careful with the syntax also great you okay so in this case it's computing for our cases I, I didn't put any auction time auction so you can com con control now the time how you compute stuff like this now put in these auctions okay okay so let's wait until it computes of gradient okay And as you go into any directory, see that you're going to find the current number, the gradient of U, and the vorticity variable. Okay, so now we can launch Paraffin and we can access that information. So see that you go here below and you have the variables. Okay, so you can select everything. And for instance, I want to see vorticity. You have it there. You need to play with the range of values. Okay, so 
half magnitude and let me put it between zero and two and press play and you can find the vertices. so this is the magnitude but also you have the components so this one is the one normal to the screen so this one should give you the sense of rotation okay so let me change the range from minus two to two minus two to two okay so see that now this one's giving you rotation so negative is clockwise positive counterclockwise okay so let's wait let me go here 200 and you have it there okay so now design is giving you sense of rotation same way we have access to the current number okay so this is the, the local current number so each cell will have a different current number see that this variables you mean this is the mean value okay so you have instantaneous value and the mean value okay so every single snapshot is being averaged okay automatically by openfold so i strongly recommend it to compute this this statistic now when you have children on a steady cases i'm trying to mean is the fluctuation okay is the fluctuation so you have a signal the instantaneous signal is equal to the mean value plus a fluctuation so here you are looking at the fluctuation of that signal okay that, that is important for turbulence, uh, turbulence model and here you have the gradient also gradient of velocity so to end this post processing and this case and then we move to the next one just to show you that this vorticity and gradients can also be computed using filters so as you go in, in open phone okay you can compute it directly in in, in, in on open phone or you can compute it in part of you so as you go in filter see that you have the here gradient and just compute gradient so you choose for instance i want the gradient of p and also if you want to compute vorticity here you have it okay so you go let me change the the name compute vorticity okay you need to use velocity okay and now you have here your quantity i call it gradients here so see that it computed the gradient so you can compare the gradients of part of you and open from and you should get something very similar and also you have the vorticity computed in part of you okay so all this stuff also you can do it in part of you not everything for instance the current number you cannot compute it or you can compute it but it's not very straightforward so this is all okay for this case so let me clean up here so remember to clean up phone clean tutorials erase everything and that's all so as you go to c1 in c1 you have exactly the same case but to do the what to do for for, for the mesh, we use block mesh, okay? So exactly same mesh, okay? So it's the open run solver. So when doing the mesh, we're already assigning the right names to, to, the, to the patches or the, the surfaces. So we don't need to do like in the previous one. Okay, so usually you need to pay attention for that when you are export importing meshes, but it's always a good idea just to do this sanity check and look at, at the names and type okay so see here that now we have this so now we're using here something symmetry plane which is pretty much the same as symmetry and actually i will log data because it makes no sense using that one here so that's all for this first part of this tutorial this tutorial the next one what we're going to do is the same but we're going to accelerate the convergence rate okay we're going to add a perturbation to get a faster convergence okay thank you for your attention see you next time bye